What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Scales 13. In today's video, we're going to be doing our third episode of our Reptile Q&A. So as always, guys, when I do a Q&A, I shout out whoever submits a question. So hint, hint, submit a question so that we can keep this series going. All right. So I have four awesome questions today. And the first question that was submitted was by Luke Gizmo. What's up, Luke? Okay. So your question is, any tips for managing your Aki's food? Tips for feeding. Okay. Tips for feeding. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. So let's just say you just received a young Aki from a breeder, right? And your Aki monitor is anywhere from, let's say, about three weeks to a few months old, right? Okay, so the question first is, what do you want to feed the animal? Well, Aki monitors are primarily insectivores. If you read scientific papers on Aki monitors and you look at what was found in the stomach contents of the animal, the majority of what they found were locusts, cockroaches, beetles, a whole different array of insects, invertebrates, right? And of course, you would also find carcasses of small lizards and the occasional rodent, right? But the majority of what was found within the animal stomach contents were insects, since that's what it eats in the wild. And of course, within Aki keeping, we have found that the easiest way to keep an Aki monitor from becoming obese is to keep it on primarily an insect diet. That's what you should be feeding, right? Now, of course, if you're going to look at your feeding schedule and think, how often should I feed this animal? There's a few different ways to do it. Some people feed literally like one doobie a roach a day or one doobie a roach and maybe the next day they might feed a different insect like a superworm and the next day they might feed it a few crickets if that's what you like to feed and things like that, right? Um, what I like to do is I like to space out my feedings and I like to feed the animal more than one prey item at a time. So what I did when I first got Thunder, I fed him about five to six days a week, and I would only give him maybe one to two insects at a time. Some days I would feed him a little more than that when I got excited and things like that, you know, like, oh, wow, look at my Aki eat. This is amazing. It's a monitor lizard, blah, blah, blah. But you shouldn't do that every day. You should only feed it a few a day while it's a baby because, of course, babies need to eat more often than adults because, of course, they're growing, but you don't want to overfeed the animal, right? And then as the animal gets older, you want to cut back on how much you're feeding the animal. Of course, not the amount of food because it's a larger animal. So, of course, instead of feeding maybe tiny doobie roaches that are the size of a dime, you might be feeding doobie roaches that are the size of, let's say, eh, let's say maybe the size of a quarter, a little bigger, maybe about this big, right? But what I do is, since Thunder is about two and a half years old, I feed Thunder about three to four dubia roaches every other day for the normal five days a week, Monday through Friday, and I let them fast on the weekends. That's what I do to make sure that Thunder doesn't get too obese while I'm feeding him. And the main thing you wanna look for is you wanna look at the hips and you wanna look at the stomach. You wanna see this one little thin line running down from the neck down to where the hips are. People look at that same physical um, indication on other monitors like savannah monitors as well to make sure that the animal's not bloated, it's not obese, it is, it's not carrying around too much body fat, right? So that's one thing that you wanna look for when you're feeding your Aki. So yeah, primarily insects, you want to feed five, six days a week as a baby. You wanna cut back on that and feed less as an adult. You can feed every day as an adult, but of course you would have to do very small portions every day. So to make it easy, I would say three to four days a week and only a few prey items at a time. And of course, make sure that your insects are dusted with calcium. Now, if you have UVB, which I personally believe you should have UVB for an Aki monitor because it is a diurnal animal that literally bats in the middle of the day, you don't need to dust your insects with calcium that has D3 mixed in it because the animal's already producing D3 within its body. 
And of course, if you're giving the animal too much calcium with D3 on top of the, uh, on top of the vitamin D3 that the animal is producing within its own body, it's going to get the same symptoms as, as if the animal had metabolic bone disease from being calcium deficient or vitamin D3 deficient where it can't absorb the calcium that it would be consuming. So that's my brief little uh, <laughs> explanation on that. But yeah, keep it mostly insects. If you have a female and she laid eggs, you wanna get some weight back on her, you can give her a few pinkies here and there to raise, um, to help her get some weight back on, but majority insects, it's gonna be the best way to do it. All right, next question, right? Next question is by Sinzala Flesh. Okay, wow, interesting name. All right. <laughs> Um, I've put in together a emergency bag, heating pads, spare food, etc. That's a great idea. Um, I apartment lives, so if the fire alarm goes off, we have to evacuate the building. Okay, so basically this person's preparing in case there's an emergency, so that way this person can not only save themselves, but also save their animals and keep the animals comfortable and healthy um, during an emergency. That's a great idea. Awesome. So let's see. Set my car over two hours, blah, blah, blah. Something to think about. Okay. Also, are there any issues with cohabit cohabitation of red and yellow ackies? I'd like to eventually get Kaiju a girlfriend. Okay, awesome. Well, let's see. Okay, so Kaiju is obviously a male. Personally, from what I've seen, people who keep groups of ackies, let's say reds and yellows together, right? Um, people who keep People who cohabitate their Aki monitors who normally have reds and they have yellows, they usually keep their trios or their groups of Aki separated into reds and yellows. Remember the fact that red Aki monitors, the majority of the time are gonna be larger than yellow Aki's. And the thing is, from what a lot of experienced keepers have told me who have kept reds, is that reds can be a little bit nippier and things like that when it comes to dealing with the human who is taking care of them, things like that. I'm not sure how they are when it comes to dealing with members of their own species, but I would worry that if a yellow acumider is smaller, than, is significantly smaller than a red, I would be worried for the yellow acumider's safety Whereas it might be getting bullied within that group of Ackies. Me personally, I would just keep red and yellow Ackies separated into their own groupings where you have a tree of reds and a tree of yellows, just for, just for the safety of your animals. Also, since Kaiju is obviously a male, since you said you want to get him a girlfriend and you want to keep your animals safe, I would make sure that if you're going to get a female Ackie and you want to keep them together, just small, small little tip. Don't get that female and just throw it in there with the male Aki because, of course, since it's already the male's territory, the female might get bullied immediately just for coming into the animal's territory. Get a whole new setup and introduce the animals in there together. That's as far as I'm going to go there. I'm not going to um, say anything else on that matter, but that's going to be the best way to keep these animals from hurting each other. Next question. Next question is by JP's Lizard World. Awesome, what's up, man? Okay, have you thought about traveling for YouTube purposes? Of course, I've seen plenty of videos. Um, I saw you just put up a video recently where you went and visited a zoo, and I've also seen some Instagram posts where you met some other reptile YouTubers. That looks like a lot of fun, even outside of making content and trying to make yourself more popular. I would love to do some stuff like that just because it's getting you more involved in the hobby, you're having a lot of fun. And there's a few guys that I actually have on the list where I want to do some collaborations with, but um, I haven't really had the time to really focus on talking to those people and setting up time. It is going to happen in the future. So guys, look out for uh, collaborations with me and other YouTubers in the future. But yeah, that's something I would totally be interested in. I'm not going to give away anything of who I'm going to be doing um, collaborations yet with but it's gonna be awesome, so stay tuned. Okay. And our fourth and final question is from Joda Mean. Okay, what is your dream reptile? All right, so I think I answered that question in our last Q&A, and I think I said it was Verena Salvatore, which of course is the Asian water monitor, but I'm gonna redo that answer because my favorite monitor right now is the Dumeril's monitor. Dumeril's monitor. 
They are beautiful animals. I like that the babies have this adorable little orange head. And as the animal gets older, that orange head fades and it has this beautiful brown coloration. They also have kind of like this rough neck monitor look to them where they have very thick scalation around the neck. Gorgeous, gorgeous animal. I would love to have one of those in the future. Of course, I would have, have to have the proper enclosure set up. I would need to be prepared to deal with a larger animal that could obviously, if the animal is being defensive, could inflict a pretty serious bite and things like that. So I would definitely need to be on my A game. I would have to be more experienced with knowing the animal's uh, body language and things like that. But outside of all of that, my dream reptile, Dumro's Mater. I would love to have one of those beautiful creatures. All right, guys, so that is it for our reptile Q&A. I've answered all four questions. If you guys would like a shout out on the next episode of our reptile Q&A, submit a question right here in this video or when I put a post up saying, hey guys, episode four of our reptile Q&A for Scales 13 is in preparation. Submit those questions now. Put those questions in the comments. I will pick questions out and I will put them in the video and you will get a shout out. And as always, guys, everyone have a great day. Enjoy your reptiles. Peace.